Shout out to BWB, man. BWB, nigga. Shout out to BWB, man. You know what I'm saying? Big Wagon Bus, man. Shout out to Big Wagon Bus. Thank y'all for coming. BWB, baby. Out the TLP Sports Club, baby. What up, guys? So this video that you're about to watch, guys, I've had this video. I should have edited it a long time ago, but a lot of news has happened since. It's never too late to give my perspective. This is the Liberian perspective. Enjoy. Buff Nation, what up? BWB, my bandwagon buffs. What it is, what it does, and what it's gonna be. It's your man's Harry Billion. Welcome to the Liberian Perspective. I want to talk more about Sadu Traore and the reason why he jumped into that transfer portal. We got more information now why he jumped into that transfer portal. It ain't new information, but I'm going to add my perspective. But before I do that, guys, please make sure to smash that subscribe button. Help this channel grow. Make sure to give me the thumbs up. And don't forget, we got BWB merch. It's available. We're the most informed and we're the most hyped. Repping Coach Prime and the CU buffs you know what i'm saying you go ahead and cop your gear and let me get into this story that's all the business i got you know what time it is let's work i dropped a video about sadu traore on the sidelines and the way that he was holding his jersey the way that he was holding his pads he was looking a little dejected and he was walking along the sidelines like he was already out of there like he was already detached from the storyline because he came in as a high value prospect so we make videos on high value prospects prospects that the buffs make a lot of noise about we make videos so it's a dude try already kid from london the london african he was coming in as a high value prospect so we was all up on it we was like okay this kid has a high football upside so we was gonna give him the thumbs up just like you're gonna give me right now on this video but then some transpired at that spring game i'm thinking if this is a high value prospect like a travis hunter like a cromani mclean who coach prime was interacting with if this guy is half value in that locker room nobody half value is kind of standing on the sideline walking like this nobody is walking on the sidelines like this come on now anyways i made my case i'm gonna leave that alone but people started saying that he doesn't block he doesn't want to block and then i said in a couple of videos i said okay well if that's the case then young man go be a wide receiver you can be a big wide receiver if you do not want to block or blocking is not your thing you want to shine as a wide receiver why don't you be a wide receiver then your number one priority is not to block. As a wide receiver, your number one priority is to catch the ball. That's your number one priority and hopefully score. But you can be a big receiver. Big receivers have an advantage. You have size and then if somebody tries to tackle you, it'll be hard for them to tackle you. So go over to the wide receiver position. Why not? We got more insight on that. Let's go to the article and then after the article, I'll come back with my perspective. Let's go. From 247 Sports, Sadu Traore, a top 10 available transfer on leaving Colorado and the position he hopes to play in 2023. This article is by Chris Hummer. All right, Chris Hummer, let's go. One of the most surprising transfer moves of the offseason came when Colorado tight end Sadu Traore decided to enter the transfer portal on April 30th after only a few months with the program. A four-star transfer and one of the biggest offseason splashes for the Buffaloes, Traore went through spring practices in Boulder before deciding to transfer a second time in the offseason. Asked by 247 Sports what went into the decision to leave Colorado, Traore said he wants to play wide receiver for the 2023 season. One of the best receiving tight ends in college football last year for Arkansas State. Chaare caught 50 passes for 655 yards and four touchdowns on the way to first team all-conference honors. The six foot four inches 223 pound London native posted an 89.6 pro football focus PFF receiving grade last season which ranked fourth among tight ends and seventh among all FBS pass catchers. Chaare currently ranked as the number eight overall available player in the 247 sports transfer rank with a rating of 91. Now, as Chaare looks for a new school, he said he's hoping to use what he learned during his first Porter run to find the right place for his future. It's not easy picking the right home, but don't be afraid of adversity. Chaare told 247 Sports over Twitter direct messages. Since Chaare re-entered the transfer portal on April 30th, he's remained a popular name for schools in need of pass catching help. Chaare has posted offers from Illinois, Oregon, Western Kentucky, Miami, Purdue, North Texas, Washington State, and Arkansas. As he considers his next school, Chaare said his priorities are simple. 
looking for a school that can continue to develop me and allow me to showcase my abilities, Charis said. As a second time transfer and a non-graduate, I think they made a mistake here. So I would just say Charis no longer qualifies for the NCAA's one-time transfer exemption that allows a player to play right away at their new school. That means Charis will have to submit a waiver if he hopes to play in 2023. Yes, I'm planning on applying for a waiver, Charis said. I want to compete. Sitting out is not something I would ever look forward to or be happy with. Traore said he's yet to send out an official visit, but potential trips are in the works. He wants to play wide receiver. So what was the conversation that was had? Did they have a conversation with the wide receivers coach and it didn't go well? Why wasn't it offered to him? So why would he then jump into the transfer portal? I know that Coach Prime has a few wide receivers. You got a guy that's over 200 pounds. He can catch. He can make plays. He's a great athlete. Why would you let that guy go? Who wants to go into the wide receivers room? You're Coach Prime. You said if a player or a kid wants something, he has to earn it did he want to earn it did he not want to earn it did he make that known was he too shook up for when the coach called him out doing a press conference saying that he had to not take a down off these are old school type of coaches these are the type of coaches that will use that type of verbiage to motivate the player they try already not accept that challenge just like coach prime when he came to see you he told the kids he said my job is to make sure that you jump into that transfer portal my job is to make sure you quit. And guess what? Your job is to make sure that I don't allow you to quit. That's a challenge to a lot of us old school people. But how different are these old school coaches or these old school players like some of us than some of these new kids? Some of these kids that were not born when we were born. What is the difference of the mentality? What's going on with these kids in, in their mind? I don't understand. If you're on the playground and somebody steps to you and say, yo, what up? What are you going to say? You say, what up? What it is and what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, you're going to say, what's up? Make your move, homie. So what is it today that these kids don't get? Is it fear? Are they too soft? Can it not handle this type of conversation? Can it not take this type of talking? This is the type of talking that you're going to get at the professional level. There are going to be guys looking in your eyes and say, you suck. There are going to be guys that look into your eyes and say, I'm about to lock you down. What you going to do? What are they going to do? If somebody's talking junk to you, what are you going to say? Because that's what I see Coach Prime was doing. I'm about to make you quit. Turns around, he's like, oh shoot, they quit. <laughs> then he's like, all right, then. Let's get some dogs in here that can take that kind of talking. What is it that's happening? What type of talking do these kids want? What exactly do you want somebody to say to you? I wasn't in the locker room. I wasn't part of the conversation. But we know from Coach Prime's past that if somebody says, I want to switch position, he will give you an opportunity to prove to them that you can play that position. And if you're not a dog in that position, he's going to say, no, you stay over here. Maybe the conversation was had and it was like, nah, you can't be the wide receiver. At the wide receiver spot, you got to be really fast. What's his speed? A wide receiver speed? Maybe he didn't have the speed. Maybe he was a tight end speed. He had the size. He didn't really have the size for a big tight end like a Gronkowski. He didn't have that big frame. But usually, if you're pass blocking or you're run blocking, it only takes a few seconds to put your body in the space to just stop somebody really quick. So you don't really need a really big frame, even though it's beneficial, but you don't really need a big frame like that. Most blocking tight ends, you're just using your body as a shield to block because we have the trenches already. If the run is coming your way, if the pass is coming your way, all you're doing is just using your body for a few seconds just to make sure that they can get the run out or get the quarterback some time to get that pass out. That's all it is. If you're not willing to do that and you wanted to be a wide receiver, I'm sure Coach Prime will give you the opportunity to be a wide receiver because it seems like they had a lot of confidence in him. When somebody says those type of things about you, what the coach said at the press conference, that means they really like you. That means that they really want you to thrive. That's how I take it. I know these kids are different. They're in a whole new mindset, but I took it like, wow, this coach really cares. He really wants me to win. And when a coach challenges you like that and you take that challenge and you really prove to that coach, you and that coach will be best friends. Like at the lunchroom or when y'all go out on away games, the coach will leave the other coach's table. He will find your table and he will sit with you because he sees that you are a dog, because he sees that you put that work in. He challenged you. You took the challenge. Weren't afraid. You didn't take offense to it. That coach will make sure that they find you every single time. When you go to the NFL, they're going to text you, hey man, good job, son. Those are the type of things. That's what builds relationships. All of those things are using to test you. Did all of these kids fill the test? 
you can get some insight about the mentality about these 1 and 11. Like, how bad did these kids really want it? You understand what I'm saying? Like, how bad did they really want it? Because from all of the things that I'm reading, from all of the conversations and the interviews and the way all of these kids are talking, I'm like, what type of player were you guys? We cannot accuse these kids of not being good football players, but I really feel like the tough talk was the issue for a lot of them, and they couldn't take it. And that's why a lot of them hit that transfer portal. If these kids were really gritty kids, and really tough kids, like some of the kids we're seeing coming in here right now, like Chance Mean, the way that he talks. So I think the tough talk changed a lot of these kids away. But anyway, the London African, my guy. You know you're African, so wherever you go, bro, I'm going to be cheering for you. And I'm going to make videos about wherever you go, so I got you. You're African. I'm African. I know you're London. You're from London. But so do try all right. Come on now. you African. I'm rocking with you no matter what. Just like all the other kids, I'm rocking with all of them. Except the detractors. If you become a detractor, you start talking crazy, then I'm not rocking with you. But, you know what I'm saying? If you're respectful, you know, you just handling your business, doing what you got to do, I'm going to cheer for you. So I'm going to leave it right there, guys. I wish him the best. Ball out wherever you go. Get to the NFL because we're going to be watching you in the NFL. I'll see you guys in the comments. Let me know what you think about that decision to play wide receiver. If he was accepted as a wide receiver or not, it is what it is. You know who I am. I'm Harry B. And that what you just heard right there was the Liberian Perspective. TLP Sports Club. Blah.